Welcome to episode 18 of the Tap Haven Podcast. How are y'all doing? Hey, oh! How's y'all's week? Well, Diggy would just try to kill himself. Bro! Oh, God. Before we started recording, these two might have noticed me run away because I sprinted outside as fast as I could because I heard. Oh, <laughs> like, oh, no. <laughs> he slipped on the stairs and is completely fine. Uh, but he is extremely overdramatic husky and he thought he was dying. Uh, so, you know, I had to give him a few hugs. And then once I stood up, he stood up and he was like, Oh, I think I'm okay. It was just like a freaking football player that got hit and is like, Oh my God, pause the game for two minutes. I'm dying. Oh my God, I'm dying. My leg is broken. He stands up. He's like, Oh, this is all right. Runs and jumps up the stairs again. He means not even scared. He means the American football or football. Which one? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Definitely football, because the only other game that I know of is called Hand Egg. Because they don't use their feet, barely, and it Hand looks like an egg. egg. <laughs> Hand Egg. You know, we are in America. <laughs> we are. <laughs> you might Drink and bourbon. People. <laughs> call, uh, all the people, calling. anybody that cares about bourbon. Exactly. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm glad and, Deku's okay. Yeah, I saw I saw the funniest uh, husky video earlier today where where this uh, poor woman has three huskies, bro, and she she goes and something happens and she's like, "Is she the reporter?" I can't remember. It was it Is was just the allegations one where no, she's no, no, like, no, no. "Okay." I think they were all laying down in the in in the living room. And one started, you know, crying as huskies do. She's like, look, don't complain to me. I just took y'all out or something like that. I'll take y'all out in just an hour. Right. And then he looks at her and starts yelling at like the top of his you know, lungs. He's like, no, 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 no. And then the other two look at him, look at her and then join. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. This poor woman. Horrible. She's like, y'all stop this this instant. Dude, huskies are the closest thing to actual like carnage machines to me. Like every single time I think of oh, any interaction with a with a husky outside of your dogs, Anthony, I'm always yeah. like, dude, screw this dog. Cause it is like <laughs> it is two seconds from just causing the most chaos glorious ruckus. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they just, they're literally supposed to run, like, 50 miles a day through the snow. Mm -hmm. Like, that's how much energy they have, and no owner can get that out of them, right? No, yeah. and, Unless you're training for uh, the dinner rod. No. Yeah, and for those that don't know my dogs, I have quiet huskies. Mm -hmm. Traumatized quiet huskies <laughs> that it took us, like, five replays of a video the other day that... Is like two minutes long and says guaranteed to make your huskies howl and towards the end of it i got it and i'm like oh oh they're starting <laughs> three more times finally get it oh and i'm like man good job buddy but like <laughs> come on sing for us i'm serious like that's what's so going sad. why are you so quiet? little that's so sad please but, uh, talk to me our listeners the, this did not happen on anthony's watch obviously he's a fantastic owner his dogs are wonderful it's just that they came to him a certain way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were abused. and Well, one was abused, and the other one was in a hoarding situation with 80 other dogs Bruh. in, like, southern Georgia. Bruh. So she, like, is just super shy. But she's so much better now. Like we, Oh, yeah. So night just and day. literally yesterday, last night, we finally took them to the farm, and they got to meet cows. <laughs> And luckily, they didn't try to kill the cows, and the cows didn't try to kill them. So it looks like we're going to get some little tiny cows. Nice. And then uh, after that, we went to uh, the local bar, and um, the dogs were great. They said hi to, like, every human that said hi to them. Okay. The only scary part was when a little wiener dog decided to get off its... Uh, it had its leash on, but it got away from its owners, and it went underneath our table... And we're a little worried because the owner asked us, like, how are your dogs with other dogs? We're like, well, with small dogs, sometimes they think they're squirrels. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> and she understood. Gotta be, bad. Gotta be yeah. careful. Yeah. And so, <laughs> yeah. And that was a little worrying, but that dog had no idea. It was completely oblivious. I was petting it. Deku was crying because he was like, food, food, no. food. 
Uh, <laughs> he was like, and then the lady got her dog back, and she's like, "Come here, little squirrel. Don't go back over there, you yeah. dog." <laughs> yeah, you might not come back. Oh man. Oh man. Yeah. My. It's nuts, but they're good. My last two weeks. <laughs> Well, I guess like we'll just, we'll just do the single week, right? I mean, we won't do the, yeah. the, the week before, right? I mean, if there's anything exciting, anything. you should catch us up. Yeah, man, I will say that I had a very interesting Friday leading into a very complicated weekend. I met up with an old friend who I had not mm. seen in a while, and they have now transitioned from a he to a they. And that also uh-huh. went along with a poly relationship. Wait, you went along with it? No, 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 probably no, 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 no. not the I word that no. we. Hold on, let's get this straight. <laughs> I did. I am not in this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just clarify. making sure you, your word, your verbiage Ooh. was a little ambiguous. Let me clarify. Let's, yeah, let's... I am not in this. What would you call it? A pentuple? Yeah. Pin? That's five. Pin That's top five. I, I said what I said. That's <laughs> oh, five. Yes. That's a lot. Five. Yes. <laughs> That's one more than four. <laughs> yes. It's a lot of people. Uh, That's a so now, lot of. Is that why? Is that why there are they? I met. I met four. <laughs> of the of they the are all together, and it was an experience no shame to those who live that lifestyle and it's their truth it's just more so like it was in a scenario that was just like there was already added awkwardness under the added fact of oh by the way we're also now poly so there it was like just like everything stacked on top of, of it yeah and my my first question my is like was just who blasted i was is afraid. there like an alpha or no so that's a good question. Like I you don't have to answer that question, but that's like what I think about. Because when I think about a poly amorous relationship, I think about what you see outside of humans, uh-huh. and I think there's usually like one leader. Like right. like you see that in Demon Slayer, right? right? The husband guy, he's like the leader, right? Right. And so I was just like, I wonder. That's just where my mind goes. So it's interesting. There are. If we're going to take your model, there are two power structures within this relationship. I would say that it is divided between the other male of the Penta and two of the women. And it is all the other power structure includes one of the women from that other group. But it is then... Uh, my friend who is now a they, them, and uh, two other women. So there's one woman who is just in the male power power structure, power, relationship structure. I don't know, man. And there is there is a another structure that has everybody else, like everybody is commingled. So, animators, if you're listening, please draw this up for me because I cannot, I, I cannot try. keep I up. Will, I, will, I will try. It I need, I need a Venn diagram. <laughs> I need a of visual the power structure. You're gonna, you guys are gonna come back in like an hour, and my entire see them wall like, is just gonna be a bunch of red strings and me going like, "No, I got yeah. you." <laughs> No, I got to. Yes, I would love that. Disconnect here. It's a crime scene now. We're investigating. No, all that to say, uh, no shame to those who live that way. No shame to uh, people who are transitioning. If you are living your truth, by by all means, live it. It was a lot at the same time, and I probably also should have taken into account some of the other situations that were living in that entire situation outside of them transitioning and them being in a poly relationship. There was just stuff under that that cut through, that like added a spice to the entire melange of that day and set it on fire. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, there's yeah. a lot to unpack. Interesting. Sure. It's, it was, yeah. it's a lot to unpack. No, I've talked to dude, a ton of not, people about it. I'll talk to you guys after the pod about like the actual details, but like, you know, yeah. what I love about what you're saying is that like one of my, one of my 
best friends, like someone, uh, someone I know really well, and, and I like, like, what am I trying to say? I spent a lot of time with this person, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I Same never person. knew that they used to be a woman. Oh. I had no clue until one random day that we we saw uh, their post on Facebook that was trying to like you know be supportive to other people in the future, and I was like. Oh, okay. Whatever. Like, I literally have always been convinced that you're a dude, and that doesn't. I'm not gonna. There's nothing's gonna change there, except the only thing that changed is uh, because we are in martial arts together. Uh, when you hit him in the nuts on accident, he'd be like, "There's nothing there. You don't worry about it," <laughs> and it would be really great. But what I love about him is that, you know, he's never made a big deal about it. He's never like, just there's like a big difference between someone that like transitions and then doesn't make a big deal out of it and then someone else that i know that transitions and is very offended by literally anything that goes on around them and i'm just like it's all kinds of people you need to relax a little bit no it's, the, it's their process that's the thing like you have to it for you and this is something i'm kind of coming to grips with and if i'm speaking out of turn and this is just like more of a journey for you tell me to shut up um but i find that whatever they are going through, whether they are transitioning from something that they don't feel represents them or they are doing something that makes them feel alive, either or, it's not you that needs to regulate. It's what they are going to put out and what you are willing to accept in your space. Like... Yeah, you know, what I meant was, like, there was, like, a weird situation where we were in a group setting and they would just, like... They would have, like, an episode mm, constantly. Yeah. Like they were very, uh, they were like a, they were like a mine. Mm. You had to step, you had to step lightly around them because you were afraid of setting them off. Mm. And when you're in a situation like that, I think that you really need to be like in therapy and talking to someone and working through what's making that happen because it's not a good place to be in. Yes. I, th I think to some degree you can separate that from the transition discussion too because that's anybody i have met many people yeah. who do that outside of <laughs> people who are transitioning like that seems like a human problem for some people yeah, I where i totally agree with your solution like think, they, they need it, somebody to talk yeah to i think it just so happens that it coincides with somebody who is transitioning but like to put like a i guess like a bow on it i would say that Yes, those people need to go ahead and deal with those issues, but I'm, I'm think I'm coming to the realization this might be just me, and I'm not trying to project it onto you. Uh, that's not my problem, and if I don't want to associate with that energy and having to deal with that energy, if it's something that's antagonistic towards me, I shouldn't feel the need to have to continue to stay in it, even though I have a relationship with you. And, I value, and mm -hmm. I value you. If it's something that's going to affect me negatively, I should be able to perceive that and to remove myself from that situation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah for the, the one that I'm, the like situation I'm describing was very niche because we were camping, mm. Ooh, you know? So it wasn't, stuck. it wasn't a situation <laughs> where you could easily like walk <laughs> away, right? Yeah. You're, you're kind of stuck there. Oh, no. And then I made like, you know, I make stupid jokes mm -hmm. and intentionally, like I'm like, I'll intentionally make a joke that is very outrageous because that's how jokes work. They're supposed to be outrageous sometimes. Are you, Anthony? Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, are you a eugenicist? And they were yelling at me. Oh. And I was oh, like, bringing back the eugenics. I was like, I was like. First off, I can't remember what that means. <laughs> Second off, not no. The word. <laughs> not the word. Oh my gosh. Is that and not nobody, even the right word? Uh, no, well, no, 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 no. It is the right We've had this discussion on the podcast. We have? Oh, have we? We did. The audience, the audience won't have seen it because it is in a cut part of our <laughs> podcast. But they'll get to see this one. <laughs> oh my God. So what does it mean? Eric? Yeah. Um, so when we talked about it last time, I, I, I looked it up and there is a thing is a, I think we said it was a eugenicist, yeah. but essentially yeah, eugenics is you got a set of beliefs and practices where they want to improve the human 
the genetic quality of the human population. Mm, got you. Right. Now, oftentimes, this really becomes associated with the Nazi movement yep. and a few other things like that, mm -hmm. like where it's a very negative light type of thing mm -hmm. because it's often just collinear to this idea of there are bad things about people that we should just remove entirely. And, that's and they're unique. good. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I... So, in this particular context, there was probably some attack where they were like, oh, are you saying that we should just remove this part of the... Uh, uh, which is wild. Yeah. But... Yeah, I can't even remember the joke. I know you can't. <laughs> it, was, I know you can't. it was so, like... It was so tiny. It was so yeah. insignificant. And then, and then you're akin to Nazis for some reason. Yeah. Like that's ridiculous. Yeah. Like that's a, that's a, and I I hate that. Light eyes, in, blonde hair. What can I do? You know. Yeah. <laughs> and I I hate when things like that I'm not kidding. People have been saying stuff like that my whole life. Just <laughs> oh, because gosh. I have light hair and light eyes, they're like, you "Are you a blah a, blah blah?" And I'm like, I'm Why like, I'd much rather you call me end? a. I, yeah. I, Look, I prefer the uh what is it? Uh fish boy, not fish boy, uh surfer boy, surfer dude, surfer you know, beach boy. boy. Well not anymore. Oh, you are the mountain man. Like I I don't know how you could be anything else anymore. You are the mountain man. You know? Yeah. You have become yeah. the you are the persona that lives in the mountains. They will tell stories about you in the in the foothills of the Appalachia for decades to come. I mean you know? I would prefer Ireland, but that's fine. Well, we don't live in Ireland. I know, but it is a segue into our whiskey today. Oh, it is. It is. So today, we are covering the wonderful Powers Irish Rye. Now, this is a very interesting one. I have not had an Irish rye. So this is an Irish whiskey. It is made from 100% rye mash out of Ireland. Now, a Ooh. lot of people have really liked the Powers brand name recently. They've kind of been popping off. They've been on things like the Whiskey Tribe and a bunch of other YouTubers have covered them. So we're definitely not the first to, to do this. Y'all, this thing and... smells good. <laughs> oh, yeah? Okay. I really like the color of it because... Uh... Sometimes Irish things are very pale. I had to, I had to pop the top, and I don't know if the listeners heard it, but it was very satisfying. Oh yeah, Ooh, this smells fancy, even though Ooh. I know it's not. Okay. Ooh, it definitely smells like a rye, but like a very um, subtle sweetness, mm -hmm. almost like a honey mm -hmm. right off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is the first time that we have enough of the whiskey to just toss a bottle, a toss a cup out. Yep. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I am going to take. For the first time oh. in Tap Haven history, I have a secondary whiskey so that Anthony doesn't yell at me anymore. I also I'm not have a yelling. Do I yell? <laughs> no, I'm do just I messing. Do I whiskey? yell? You do not yell. Oh, do you do not whiskey. yell. I don't know. Wait, I, can I use I'm this? I'm just teasing. Okay, you can clip this out. You can out use anything. You can clip this out if you want to. I'm using this. What? Hell You're yeah. using a new riff? That's perfect because that's another ride. Okay, perfect. Wait, That'll be great. So that's is an, that the one that we both got? Yes. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I don't know if we were gonna use it, so I just didn't make. I wanted to make sure, like, if I I don't need to. Do you? If I were you, dude, mm. I would uh put some of it in one of those sample bottles. Okay. Oh man. So that you don't accidentally finish it. I mean, it's not. And it's, then. I'm not going to. I promise you. I promise. You've accidentally finished stuff before, bro. What did I accidentally no. finish? I thought you accidentally finished something. No. No, I no? accidentally didn't get something. Remember. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's right. But um, what are the, After, what are the uh, notes on this one, man? What are the yeah, what are the notes? yeah, yeah, yeah? So the notes that they give us, which I have my own notes now, but in, in my in my mind, but they say that on the nose we should be getting a healthy dose of burnt orange, maraschino cherries, toffee, banana. Definitely with banana. rich warming notes of freshly baked rye bread, buttered croissants, croissants, calm down, charred oak, <laughs> and then down. robust spices of clove, white pepper, and ginger are met and conjoined together with a healthy dose of sweet vanilla and 
earthy sugar cane. Gentlemen, I think with those notes, we just try and taste this and see what goes on. It smells really it good. Smells it does smell actually really, really good. This is a... It's, it's a very. It just smells sweet. It smells nice. Like it smells I get, like I get a little bit of that rye, spicy clove, mm-hmm. a little bit of it, and you know what? I could actually see the ginger. I don't know if I get the white pepper. I get the banana. I do see where where they're going with the banana. I think I've separated it into kind of two different ideas. Like there's the sweetness, and the rye is kind of like a back burner. Well, no, the rye is kind of mellowed out in such a way that I'm perceiving it. I I'm, I think that's what where the banana is coming from. Mm, okay. Dude, I can't get banana at all. Really? No. Just now you should be, you you have rye in front of you, right? Because that's going to be your best uh, sniff. Uh, yeah, I just smelled the rye. Yeah. yeah. You getting it? Mm, smell that rye. Wow. No. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I can get the clove. No. Yeah, there the is. Rice I, smells... I get some clove. Guys, I want to drink this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheers. Oh, cheers. To 18. To 18. Yeah, to 18. We're now legal in most states. European states, maybe? <laughs> Legal for what, man? <laughs> yeah, I wasn't talking about drinking, but yeah, Smoking? legal to drink in some states. Gambling? Ooh. Order ads online from the TV ads? And so I get, okay, let me give you the taste because there are two pieces of it mm-hmm. that kind of almost overpower everything else for me. Okay. They describe the taste as candied ginger, orange peel, Clove spice, peppermint, caramelized apples with brown sugar, sweet cereal, and red licorice notes. They all build into this final vanilla and charred oak that balances with rye signature spices. And I will say, I get a lot of that peppermint clove mix Mm -hmm. it's almost like an unsweetened peppermint Mm, like a true mm, mm. peppermint type of deal like how you can barely taste those those halls mints Mm -hmm. that are like kind of medicinal yeah yeah Mm. but a lot of clove Mm -hmm. it's like Hits me with the clove. I get bitterness from the orange peel. I get bitter at the very end. Yep. I I I almost. It almost tastes like the pith of an orange to me. It almost gets to like chocolatey vibes at the end, but not. But it's the bitterness. Yeah. The bitterness is, comes from comes from something else. I'm just I'm liking yeah. the bitter flavor to what you get from a dark chocolate. I'm going to compare that to the Red Breast 15, which is my secondary here, which is a, a just an Irish whiskey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Anthony's the doing the Red 12. Breast 12. Red Breast 12, and this leads me into one of my stories for the day. I have many. Mm. Um, my only Red Breast 12 was broken yesterday. What happened? Yesterday being a Tuesday, mind you. Yep. So we all know how big of a partier this man is. Eric likes to throw down. So... As the the podcast enjoyers know, you all know, a few weeks ago, I got a new bar. Oh, yeah. yeah. And we talked about that? We did not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I think we talked about it before it was constructed, right? We talked about it before it was constructed. We did not. We didn't talk about it when you built it. You built it last week. Guys, no, no, no. no, We didn't build it. We didn't build it. It is super nice, though. Well, they pieced it together. Yeah, we pieced it together. You know what I mean. Anyway. Yeah. Basically built. Basically, but it's this very beautiful piece. Essentially, there was this guy on Facebook Marketplace who was moving and needed it out of his house. This thing is insane. Like, we looked up the company that makes this bar, which I, I, unfortunately next week or something I'll have to get y'all the name of this company. But their new pieces that look like this or look similar cost upwards of six to ten grand wow 
depending on how nice it is. This up for. I believe it. It was on Facebook Marketplace for two hundred dollars because the guy needed to move. Guys, this thing is huge. It it's is like, huge. It's, it's huge. It's like ten feet wide, maybe it, twelve. Like, yeah, obscene. it's you like saw ten it? feet. Dude. Yeah, it's so cool. I, watched, I was. I'm very envious. I watched his yeah. wife it's really <laughs> up on uh, her story and like Eric going like, "Look at all the things I can store in here." Look yeah, and <laughs> I've almost filled it. Wow! Wow! <laughs> Sir, you have uh, to buy the larger hard drive. <laughs> you can't just buy a, a, a PC and put the same hard drive in. Eric's yeah. going to start digging a tunnel under his kitchen, like a door, Absolutely. just to store all of Just to store all the whiskey. You just become, you add a sub cave to your cave. But yeah, <laughs> we we replaced an old Wayfair cabinet. You know, a pretty cheap Wayfair cabinet. Well, somebody came and picked it up yesterday. And I need that back. my wife and them were, were picking it up. Mm-hmm. And there was still one bottle left in the bottom. Oh, oh no. And it's the red breast. And it was a red breast. So I'm sorry. I don't have a 12, so that's why I have the wonderful 15, which is, in my opinion, better than the 12. Mm. Um, if it wasn't, we'd have problems. Indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it is better than the 12, but not as good as the 12 cask strength, um, which I think is really where the red breast starts to shine is when it gets to that cask strength. But, but yeah, so this is an Irish rye. And you know what's interesting about this is that if you get a rye whiskey in the States, they oftentimes do toasted barrels. They do, you know... A bunch of companies are known for doing the same type of barrel that a bourbon may do, but without the corn. This one actually does seasoned American oak casks. Hmm. Ours? Yeah. Seasoned American oak. Yeah. And so it's interesting. Now, I, as far as I can tell, this is not age stated. And so... I do not know how old a whiskey we're talking about, and I couldn't find anything immediately through a, a, a quick look, but it it doesn't taste super old. Mm. No. I will say... You know, we also... Yeah, go ahead. It's only 86 proof mm-hmm. as well. 86.4 proof. I just saw that. But the Red Breast 12 is only 80 proof. Yeah. 40%. They proof the Red Breast down a good bit. Interesting. Well, what's nice about the Red Breast is there's a sort of um, the viscosity on the tongue feels nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But the aftertaste is very bitter for me. While the Powers is just good all around. I don't notice that viscosity, but it just smells good, tastes good, finish good. I, good, good. I would have to you know, say I'm, the, bitter, the bitterness is present enough for me for this that I'm like, oh, still. Like, it's sim- it's very similar to me for the red breast in terms of, like, the aftertaste. But Eric. Oh, there, so you don't like it. Hmm. There is an... Uh, so, in my... And this is, of course, the 15. I think the Powers Irish Rye gives a more bitter aftertaste to me than the 15 does. Now, I do think I understand the bitterness that you're talking about. I'm wondering if there that middle section of the red breast is something that you like or don't like. It's kind of right, uh, the way the red breast works, right up front, you get some of this almost sweet bread, short bread flavor very quickly. Mm-hmm. And then it transitions into this almost doughy, sour like a flavor mm-hmm. almost like a baking mm-hmm. dough like a ba- type like a of bread. deal yeah yeah and then it transitions into the heat and then it goes into the like this bitterness mm-hmm. i'm wondering if that middle section is something that uh, you enjoy or don't enjoy i do like the middle end section like i feel that it's the one thing i'm missing from the powers that i know that I can at least get a little bit from the red breast because I don't know if I've told you but like I've had the red breast uh, recently and though it is good it's not like uh, it's not shattering 
earth shattering. Like I'm not, I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing it as a pinnacle or a standard for how I would look at Irish whiskey. I know that there's good Irish whiskey out there. We've had it on this podcast. Sure. So like I know it's I know that it can be good. I would take the Sagamore or the um what did we have before? It was like clear. We had it out of the um Oh, that was the Ir- the other Irish whiskey, yeah. the JJ JJ Coley, I, I believe. I would take those two over over this in terms of the middle part of the flavor because it's actually more present. I feel like this, it's it's like a record that skips. Like you get the beginning of the song and it skips all the way to like after the chorus. Uh, the, the, um... Maybe I need to take more time with it though. Maybe I need to slow down and actually like... You know, we got all the time we need. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, this one we have a full bottle. If I do, boy, I'll tell you what. Yeah, yeah, I'm about dead anyway. Man. Let's go. I definitely think if you look at it from like a baking spices perspective, though, if you like clove, for example, mm-hmm. I feel like this might be right up your alley. I, I like I get a lot of clove hints of unsweetened peppermint, like actual peppermint. Mm-hmm. It hasn't been sweetened. Uh, Almost medicinal. That dominates the okay. flavor profile for me, I feel. Now, I want you to try something. Because while Eric was describing things about the red breast, I was trying to like go along with him mm-hmm. and drink it. Mm-hmm. And because of it, I might have stumbled on a trick. Oh. And we're, you're going to try this okay. trick. After swallowing the sip, mm-hmm. I didn't move my tongue or my mouth at all. It kind of like froze it in space and time. And w- as long as I didn't move anything, that bitterness didn't show up. <laughs> You're over Get here. out of here. You're time traveling in our whiskey like, here, I see. Just stay still as possible. Just stay still. Okay. Okay, but so, here's the theory. Here's the theory. The set, when you move your... It describes what the flavors are and I don't move, is what you're saying. You don't move. My theory is that when you move your mouth around, when you move your tongue, your glands release saliva, uh-huh. and that changes where the uh, remaining flavors are sitting. And so it's like you remove the good stuff, and now only the bitter is left because it's been displaced by your saliva so yeah swallow and don't move it eric describe it for him uh which one the 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 powers oh the powers so for the powers i get a hint of rye right up front that is followed immediately by a blast of clove and peppermint followed by a little bit of a burn but not too much it's almost on the back of the tongue it brings out a little bit of that black pepper and that fades into almost this dry bitterness that kind of opens up the the palate. I hate that that worked. It worked! <laughs> I hate that that worked. Isn't that weird, dude? Now, do we attribute it work? to the tongue not moving or my voice being just wonderful? Uh, Eric, shut up. Anyway. <laughs> How dare you? How dare both of you? Um, no. Yeah, I think honestly, we might just have overactive tongues, and like as soon as like <laughs> there's like a ooh not nice flavor, it's like <laughs> get yeah. it out, get it out of here, get, get out of here. Out of here. <laughs> so it makes me consider like all the whiskey and bourbon I've had up to this point. <laughs> Dude, right? Like, what about when you and I were hating all of the uh, the mixers? Exactly. We're like, that's gross. That's gross. What if every one of them could have been good? We were just if like, we just the, ro- sat with it for a minute. Let me try this again. I think don't say yeah, anything. Yeah, that's so weird. Okay. You don't have to say anything. You guys can keep yeah, on talking. I'm yeah, sorry. it worked for me again. But so the the weirdest thing was Eric goes and describes bitterness, and I'm like, the bitterness isn't happening because I'm not moving my tongue. And then I think if I wait long enough. The bitterness is almost non-existent completely. Hmm. Eric, if you try the bit, if you get the bitterness and you can feel it, maybe you should try. Okay. 
maybe maybe it can happen to you too. So, maybe so, you. Yeah, it, together, as, as kind of like a conjoined effort here, I need both of you to alternate in sultry voices telling me what I should be tasting while I taste it. Are you ready? I don't think you want me to tell you what you should be tasting. Okay. Let's let's go right here. <laughs> oh, okay. as, uh, I'm going as, three, as two, you come one. up to it, there's a lot of clove. And then uh, once you sip on it and, you, and start chewing it, th there's more clove. <laughs> give me some clove on your tongue, right? And then you're going to have a little bit of orange at the very back end of it. Either that black pepper. Yeah, you like that. <laughs> <laughs> you like a little spice in your life you know you do <laughs> I'm, so, I'm disgusted with myself <laughs> welcome to the welcome internet welcome to the internet oh, God. Um, we're gonna cut this for our OnlyFans ASMR uh, style uh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Don't, don't even don't even well, oh my god <laughs> we'll just we'll take a macro lens takes of our our tongues Absolutely. touching the whiskey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Called? Oh my god! Nothing? Okay, guys, I saw the craziest thing online today. Um, there is a trick. I can't remember the name of it, but it's like if you wiggle a camera with a macro lens, so you're zooming in on something really small. Probably works on anything, honestly. And you wiggle the camera, you give a 3D effect on a 2D image so people can perceive three dimensions as long as you're wiggling the camera hmm. at a consistent and high enough rate. And it was wild that. because they, you've seen yeah, it? I've seen that. Isn't that yeah, cool, man? That's crazy. So yeah. I think that the future of film is going to be wiggly. They kind, so of, they kind of do that in some <laughs> cases, too. Like, you for example, <laughs> when you have uh, chase cams or a thing, look at uh, horror That's films. actually a really good point. Are, when it's all shaking and stuff, yeah. you actually get like a 3D effect. Yeah. Yeah. And most people hate it. <laughs> it's like, stop shaking the camera. God, yeah, like, no, well, what are you doing this to me? It. It's also, you know, they put a little bit of movement into some cameras, too, to make it feel smoother mm -hmm. because your brain like immediately feels off when the camera becomes perfectly static yeah. for example you can see this a lot in horror films horror films will give this almost like a person's holding it it'll have a little bit of give a little bit of and then waver. right when the tenseness starts the stiff. camera motion switches mm -hmm. and it becomes fully stiff mm -hmm. And that adds to your perceived Discomfort. like tension mm -hmm. because your brain feels like something's off when everything's too perfect. Yeah. Absolutely, hundred yeah. percent. All right. And so, while they don't do it often for the three D effect, which I also think is really cool, um, they do use the the camera movement. I think and the vibration the, like, of cameras would be super cool to like see, like. like if that theory was true and they came up with an entire rig to be like, yeah, we just like put this thing on a gyropter and it like vibrates on the yeah. axis so tight that like you can't really perceive it as a human, but like it's it's just enough to have that phys that uh, ocular effect. Be cool. And uh, and then how long until it's in our phones? <laughs> it'll until never you're be, holding it'll it. It'll never be in our phones. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Those are crazy, out. man. Oh my god! But um, but yeah. So this this one is a weird one for me. Same, Anthony. What would you pay for a bottle of this? Mm. So since I'm on the spot, I'm gonna go with my gut. Seventy-five. Um, and what would you rate it? Like, like, was this good for you? Was this amazing? Was this? Like, so, where was it? if I remember right, I think I gave the Red Breast 12 a 4. You did? And I might be wrong. I did. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm getting better. Um, and so, I want to give this... I wanted to say 5, but maybe a 6? I'm really struggling to wow. hone in on it, to be honest. Because I'm... Dude, I don't trust myself. I've been going back and forth between the red breast and the powers. 
completely left. I was like, oh, we're getting into that. Okay. <laughs> I'm just like, at one point, you know, I, I, I brought out the red breast. I try it, and I'm like, this is way worse. And then I go back and forth. I'm like, actually, the red breast is better. And then I'm like, actually, I'm, not... You're not sure. I'm just bad at this, man. Not I'm not sure. I, I'm i going to give it a five. I'm going to give the powers a five and say that... I might have to change my rating of the red breast at some point because of this new trick of not moving your mouth no. after you swallow. I will and being say able to taste things. It is crazy too, and this is something I I knew this, but it really didn't hit home for me until a recent food theory episode came out. Which by the by the way, if you haven't seen it, um, his name I can't remember if it's Santi or not uh, on the spot, but. He took over from Matt Pat and he's doing the food theory videos. And one of the recent ones, he talked about how the taste buds work a little bit. And the, I always knew that your taste buds kind of adjust to sweetness. And so if you have something super sweet, the next thing you have is going to feel less sweet. But I don't think I fully encapsulated how quickly and abrupt that changes. And the fact that if you have something super sweet or something super bitter or something super sour, your taste buds change chemically in something like four seconds. Chemically? And yeah. So f the, just from what you perceive as sweet changes entirely four seconds after you eat something sweet, essentially. Interesting. Now, there's a lot like of happened, details there, but it's like, that's crazy how fast that happens. This happened to me at the farmer's market the other day. We went to get some local honey, and she was like, I've got something new for you to try, but I'm not going to, you got to try it last. You got to try these other things because it's going to change your taste buds. And I was like, wait, you got like those crazy berry honey things? Like, you know, those berries that change your taste buds? She was like, no, no, it's just cinnamon. And I was like, what? She's like, yeah, cinnamon's going to taste. <laughs> She's like, there's cinnamon, cinnamon in the honey. It's going to change your taste buds. <laughs> Chill out, dude. It's just cinnamon. She's like, okay. Yeah. I didn't know that cinnamon taste changed your taste buds that much. Every flavor. Every, all of the five, I, I can't remember. I think there's five flavors, essentially. Umami, mm -hmm. sweet, sour. Salty. Salty. Can't remember what the fifth one bitter? is. Bitter? Maybe bitter. But all of them change your taste buds immediately. So if you have something that's super bitter, right before you have something that has a little bit of bitterness but tastes good, all of a sudden, you won't taste the bitterness as much in that second thing you have. Mm -hmm. Your taste buds will almost immediately uh, change. And so what could have also have happened is that you had some of the bitterness from the powers that made the red breast less bitter, and then going back to the powers made it less bitter, mm -hmm. right? And your a, taste buds yeah. were naturally getting accustomed to it as well. I had a similar experience at a uh, restaurant we have here in Houston called uh, Nancy's Hustle. And the waiter gave us a cookie and, and a um, drink to go along with it. And they said, like, eat the cookie and then drink the drink. And it makes the drink taste like, uh, like soda or something. And if you drink <laughs> it just like straight up, it just tastes complete. It, it tastes like alcohol. But with the cookie going into the drink, it was just like a completely different experience. And I might be butchering that. So I'll ask yeah. my wife and she'll tell me what it was because she remembers everything. <laughs> Makes sense, man. I mean, like I said last time, it was really cool when we went to that bullet um, like remote tasting facility and they had these little brass jars of smell That's super to cool. pair with each tasting. Yeah. And it was yeah. like, it just like helped you to smell and taste something that you probably couldn't on your own, unless you're Eric. Then you have the super sniffer. What are you rating the super this? Taster. Super sniffer. Anthony rated it. It was a five for him. Oh no, I mean Nat's on the right track because Nat, you know, he can tell, he can feel it. He knows that I actually already changed my mind. Yeah. Oh yeah. no, do you change your mind? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was sitting here and I poured a little bit more of the powers and I tasted it. <clears throat> after like not tasting anything for a while, I was like, that's way more bitter than I remember the red breast being. So now I want to say that the powers is like a four mm -hmm. and I think I should change the red breast to like the five, you know, 
I, I think I, I literally should, just flipped them. I think you should set aside time for both of them, but I think you're right. Thank you. You're welcome. Hmm. How about you? What do you yeah. What are you giving it? Yeah, Nat. Who me? What are you paying for this <laughs> bottle? Um, sixty. Yeah. Okay. And what would you What would you rate it? How did you feel about it? This is a f- for me because it's not very sweet and tasty like I like my stuff because I'm a baby. <laughs> uh, no, that's not true. I I just like stuff to have uh, a sweet kind of connotation with them. And so saying that, I would give this a 3.5. This is really close to being a 4 for me. Gotcha. Uh, it's not undrinkable. It is honestly a daily driver for anybody who's really into Irish whiskey, especially those who have like like to have a little bit of rye with their mm-hmm. whiskey. Um, so with their Irish whiskey, sorry. The smell on the nose was very, very enticing, but as soon as I took the first uh, sip of the actual whiskey... It was gone. Like, the only thing that really stuck was the prominent flavors, which are the untreated peppermint, the rye, and the clove. And I really like to be able to smell different things as I, as I drink the initial glass. And usually it's only one glass that gives me that full panorama of, like, the things that are inside of this... Uh, bourbon or whiskey or whatever I'm, I'm drinking but I don't get that from the powers which is unfortunate but definitely not a restrictor for anybody else it's just not my thing I would definitely go for this if you are interested in, in any form of Irish styled uh, liquors because this thing there's almost like it almost harkens to like Pete at the beginning uh, uh, at first I was like is that Pete and then I was like nah it's not Pete <laughs> but it's a it's a great simulation of a um, solid Irish whiskey I'm just I don't think I'm an Irish whiskey person for certain things I think there are certain Irish whiskeys that I really like and there's certain there, and just everything else is everything else man yeah so I forgot to lower my price so I was, I'm just gonna take Nat's price for 60 bucks but um I also just like threw back the last little bit of my powers yeah. like kind of quickly yeah. and it tasted way better dude and that makes me wonder like do they ever <laughs> design what <laughs> keep flip foot on flip flopping on me come on man i'm just <laughs> dude i'm just one okay it just makes me think like so we all learned about the kentucky chew right which i would agree lets us taste everything which might make us properly critical but what if some people are making their whiskeys based on throwing it back a little bit faster, not chewing it. And that's why they don't pick up on those terrible flavors when they're crafting it. You know what I mean? It's that just could a new be theory. Fair. That could be there. I don't yeah. know. Okay. <clears throat> I, I am interested. I think that as you aerate and essentially as the alcohol content changes and evaporation occurs naturally in the drink, mm-hmm. You get different flavors that start to come out through the oils and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And yeah. I, man, this one's a weird for me. It smells amazing. Mm-hmm. I really love the smell. Mm-hmm. There are things in the I smell. The I smell. want a whiskey that tastes like how this, this smells. Smell. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Cause it smelled wonderful. Mm-hmm. I now I, I will say to, uh, just to kind of cap off Nat's statement, I don't think this tastes like an Irish whiskey in a lot of ways. I don't think it has the unmalted barley flavor that happens when you have an Irish whiskey. And the rye is prevalent to some degree. I think the problem that I have with this is a little bit twofold. One, I think that the flavors that are present are very loud flavors Mm -hmm. and they cover up some of the flavors that I like of just a traditional rye, something like the bullet 12 year that 
Anthony and I got to try recently. Right? Hey, look, I'm just saying <laughs> that was a rye rye. It tastes like rye, but it is so wonderful. Mm. And one of the things about it is that it highlights the flavors of rye that are just rye. And if you don't like rye, you're not going to like that whiskey at all because it just tastes like rye. There isn't a lot crazy going on there. This has this almost clove peppermint pepper flavor that comes out and it, it really feels like you got in the ring with Mike Tyson and he, he punched you in the face a few times. And like, yeah. it it's so loud. <laughs> he's talking about a roommate oh my god (laughs) but and and so on one hand if you like clove and peppermint in those that almost like it almost makes your tongue tingle for a little bit after you're done drinking it yeah because of the peppermint flavor to me um if you like those flavors like they're here but I don't know if those are for me. And and so I'm kind of torn. I, I think, in, in all honesty, I would put this closer to a, a 2.5 to me. Really? There, yeah, there are things that are interesting, kind of. But, like, I don't think I'll ever... It's undrinkable? No, 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 no. Remember, my undrinkables are one. One is I thought under a three me. was undrinkable. No, 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 no. no. Well... No, no, no. Okay, what's a two for you? A two is something that I'll I'll drink it if it's in front of me, but I'm never gonna go out and buy it. Mm-hmm. Like I'm never gonna choose to drink a two. A three is something mm. that has interesting notes but still needs maturation. Four is something that's almost there. There's enough. There's two or more things yeah. that you like. Five, Five is, is like the 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 standard daily. Yeah. Right. And so I'm comparing. Get on the this same like, page, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm comparing this to like the Redbreast 15, which in my opinion is closer to the five and a half, six for me. It's like a little bit above a daily drinker for me. And of course it is one of the ones I go to pretty, pretty often. Um, But not as much as something like the cash strength Redbreast that I think just beats out everything else at that price range. Mm. Um, And it has so much more complexity in my opinion and it doesn't have these loud flavors that i don't personally enjoy enjoy yeah and so this is and the reason i say i'm torn is because i could see how somebody who likes a lot of clove for example or drinks a lot of chai tea like traditional indian chai tea yeah may come and try this rye whiskey and it smells great it smells sweet and then you try it and you get some clove Mm -hmm. i could see how that could be an enjoyable experience for somebody and it's not that any of those things are particularly bad but i think it's just too overpowering for the things i want in a rye whiskey that it is so far and away different than the profile that i'm looking for that it's hard for me to say that i would ever choose to drink this one fair enough well, since it's under a three you would pay zero yeah luckily enough no this negative is... <laughs> negative five negative five yeah, five. Yeah, yeah yeah somebody has to buy the to shot pay. for me yeah somebody has, has to buy to the shot five dollars you're not gonna get a five dollar whiskey shot please well so funnily enough i would expect this to be about three dollars honestly considering it is a thirty dollar whiskey Oh, wow. This is only thirty dollars. This is only thirty dollars. That is a very reasonable very price for this. I think price. agreed. Yeah, I, think I so would too. very much buy this for that. Just to the smell is really good, and then some people that I know might like Use it. Use it as a cologne, and then realize that you're actually wearing out yeah. just to your work, and people are like, hey, "Oh man, yeah, this is a cologne. <laughs> Give it to me. Like, can, can we it. bathe in this? This would be wonderful." I please don't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is half the price of what Nat and I expected to exactly. pay for it. Like, that's kind of yeah. that's impressive. Like, so many are so overpriced that like that's just 
I think Powers is doing a good job. Absolutely. Based on that. Absolutely. This leads yeah. me into something I wanted to bring up, which was that um, I feel like now I am agreeing with um, Eric more so when he says like a five is like a daily drinker. And I, under I think I understand that. But the problem for me is, and maybe Nap can relate, most of the time when I'm drinking something, I am not in a like social situation or even the headspace to actually enjoy a five. So I'd rather have a three because I'm like, I can't appreciate something higher than a three. So I'd rather have a bullet, like standard bullet or standard Woodford's. Cause I'm like, I want a bourbon. I don't care about the intricacies of it right now because I'm not, I'm paying attention to my friends. So I'm not going to pay attention to the, awesomeness in the intricacies of it while i feel like eric's capable of doing that in a social situation and i i have a really hard time doing it i i personally I, i'm probably more akin to eric i will turn off mm -hmm. people to go ahead and oh, okay cool it's like i will sacrifice I will, these relationships to enjoy this whiskey absolutely. <laughs> if, turn them all off the, tune them out to be fair though uh, the friends that i do drink around are usually the people who are also doing the same exact thing and they want to talk about it so like i'm yeah. talking about uh, it and okay. like, that creates the communal experience of like experience the taste like together like i i bought a blade and bow like straight whiskey for a friend uh for their very birthday. solid and i was like dude i'm gonna like i'm gonna give this to you I need to taste that. <laughs> you you got to have that at the distillery. I know, but it's still at the it's same time. So it's so like, good. I'm never gonna. Oh, I'm never gonna have an experience where I am going to give a bottle to somebody and not be like. And by the way, some of that is mine. <laughs> I need. I need some, some, of, some of, it. of that. Some of, can we, I need can dude. We <laughs> some of that because I because I want it. Please give me. When some I of visited, that. when I visited Eric the other day. <laughs> and he gave me that like bullet rye 12 year. I completely misunderstood what he was telling me. I thought he had like three bottles of it. Oh, dude. And he did not. He only gave it to me. And I was like, the place only I was, had one bottle. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to take it home. I, I thought he had two more oh, bottles. And then I found out. I was like, oh my God, we have to try this, Eric. Oh, you, <laughs> you're going to let me leave without letting you try it? Like, what are you doing? I'm courtesy for all. <laughs> listeners if somebody gives you a bourbon and they've like they're tell, telling you hey these are the flavor palettes that are in it it's a really great bottle please open that thing and give the, that person a taste yeah. because they bought it and they were immediately like man i really wish i was buying this for myself <laughs> yeah i feel like so and this this might just be a me thing and maybe it's because we're now is kind of what we do mm -hmm. in, in a lot of ways but I and I think I t actually told this a little bit on a previous episode because I remember s seeing it while I was editing. But I feel like the social aspect of discussing and sharing an experience that you cannot get from other s styles of drinks mm -hmm. is, for me at least, when drinking is at its most. Fun. Absolutely. Right. And all right, that means we have to get our wives to start no nope, drinking. No. No. No, I'm, I'll explain because the well, the problem is for me, like I when Eric says that, I immediately remember when we went on the bourbon trail and we're all sitting there, me, you two, Mark, and Steven, and that's happening. And we're all tasting it and everyone's bouncing off each other, and it's really great. And I was able to really focus on it. But when I'm in Eric's kitchen, and Bon V and Ash are having a separate conversation or they're distracted or they're curious about what we're having, but they don't have their, they don't have some cause they're drinking something else. My ADHD is really high on that. If you take a test, it's really high score. So I'm paying attention to all that. And I'm trying to pay attention to Eric talking to me. It's like, bro, we need to step outside on your deck. We need to go out. <laughs> I'd separate Light us up from everything so, what I'm like, get so that I can pay attention to this. So what I'm hearing is other people need to adapt to your ADHD. <laughs> That's what Otherwise, my ADHD is adapting to them. <laughs> Otherwise, you have to adapt your way of thinking to their way of thinking, which is 
I understand because well, it's when like you're the, not focused on stuff and you're like, I'm just, I'm trying to stay afloat, y'all. But like, there's oh. there's literally nothing I can do. Like, I think it's also yeah. really hard too because it takes a lot of focus and effort to sometimes pick out flavors and interesting things about whiskeys in a lot of ways because all of that is memory associative and so if somebody's taking your attention a little bit your recall goes down and and then you can't recall the flavors and then your brain just muddles them together and so it is interesting i i i see what you're saying well the best way i see it is uh there's apparently three types of attention there's attention that is like a floodlight attention that is like a spotlight and then i think the third one is like third person perspective attention where you're like an the observer is... yeah okay right and so the problem that i have is that my floodlight is extremely strong <laughs> and so i see everything around me but my spotlight is barely on it's like off <laughs> It's like the switch isn't even being turned on. And so if everyone around me is doing the same thing, we're in a tasting room. I'm able to like, yeah, here we go. Yeah. He can but, see the mind yeah. map, but the mind map has to all be doing the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> we Dude, all it's nuts. the same plane of thinking. Oh, oh my God. Buddy, hi. Well, with that, well, with that uh, I'm, I, you know, I think Nat should start because he... Has betrayed us he has gone what off the done? deep end he was able to attain glory oh, and hope God. this week <laughs> and Man. unlike us who were abandoned and thrown off the ship okay nat okay what have you been playing okay. this week man oh. are we at that part now we we're at that part fantastic okay so um i took a shot in the dark like literally two days ago not even on the release of this said game's um, public t uh, test. And I got an email last night and I was like, let's <laughs> let's go. So um, for those of you guys who don't know, maybe people who don't play video games, I don't know, um, if you've been living under a rock or something, the Hades 2 um, test has released and I got to get in <laughs> and it's a ton of fun guys oh yeah like so for let's see some notes are you allowed to talk of about course. it yeah they already released the uh, yeah it's a public test. yeah they already streamed like okay. some of the public test already on their own, own public uh, YouTube channel so Ooh. some notes just in case for those of you guys who haven't watched the uh, public test release dev log or whatever. Um, so we fo we're following Melanoe, sister of Zagreus, the main character of the last game. Um, time, the time line is a little funky wonky. I'm not sure what's going on, but um, I've gotten to the point now where I'm very clear that uh, Melanoe was separated from her family very early into this entire situation, and she was raised to basically put the put an end to the current um, antagonist, who is Kronos, who is the Titan. Well, the well, is a Titan, but is uh, Lord of Time. Yep, and the first boss is your teacher who is he uh, Hecate, which is a Greek witch of some kind, I believe. Yeah, Either she's way. like the, yeah. the goddess of religion or something, yeah, she's like, something that. like that. She's like the... But anyway, um, she is the teacher of Melanoe, and she's also your first boss, which is super dope. So yeah, the whole idea of like the teacher is the first gateway into the real game. But there's... Aside from the story, let's talk about some of the stuff that they're sneaking in there. There's just so much. There's so much. Guys, there are two routes. We can only do one right now. One mm. goes down. The other one goes uh -huh. up. Up where? 
yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about, man. What? So, I'm Olympus. Yes, I'm guessing that. I'm this guessing is, it has to be is, right. This is like, tinfoil has hat to be Olympus right now. So, like for those of you okay. guys who are not I'm ready in. to hear the fact that I may or may not be wrong. I'm guessing we get down to the bottom of Tartarus because what has happened is that Cronus has killed Hades and captured his family. Or he's killed the entire family and just Melanoe is alive. Mm-hmm. Melanoe gets to the bottom of the, of the uh, of Tartarus and we find out that Hades is still alive and that everything that's happening right now has been set up by the gods. And now we have to go the opposite way and be like and and call the gods out on their bullshit. But now we are getting boons from different gods or from from Titans now. So yeah. we're going up to be like, hey, what are you guys doing? So I am envisioning That'd that there cool. are two styles. There are two types of runs that are going to be happening. One where you're yeah. discover, like discovering all this and possibly like gathering secrets to bring up to the top. I think you have to do both. Uh, almost in conjunction, back and forth, back and forth yeah. to find the full answer to the game. That's my theory. Oh, that'd be dope. But Dude, Super Giant is they're they're, they're so just big amazing, brain, man. They took the they're entire so concept good. of like a of a roguelite with a very rich story tied into everything, and they're like, how can we make it better? And yeah. branching like that was the one thing that I wish that I could have seen more variation with what you were doing in terms of your runs for Hades. I don't care about the difficulty. I want to see different stuff because I've never been a person yeah. who wants to go ahead and see how high can I put the heat. Yeah. I want to know. You should have that obviously, but like yeah. interesting mechanics are more fun than harder mechanics. Exactly. And so I'm thinking like now, how are you going to constitute going down and then possibly coming back to the middle and then going back up. So you have these Uber mm-hmm. runs where there's two types of boons that interact with each other on the top end and they have to because now you're facing off against gods. I I, I also wonder and I haven't seen or played any of this mm-hmm. for the audience. Mm-hmm. So this is just pure conjecture based off of what Nat has said right here. I, I wonder if it could be like a binding of Isaac type of thing where Possibly. doing certain things in one direction unlocks the other direction oh, absolutely has to that could be cool too has to be so <clears throat> all in all the game is great um they changed some of the controls so it's like a little bit of like a learning curve um there are some things that have stuck yeah. from zagreus uh and there's some stuff that has just transferred over to milan Mil- that's completely different you can sprint now after you dodge so once you hit hit the button to, to dodge you can hold it and she will be able to move faster around the map now doing that means that you can't do anything else but it does mean that you can move faster there's a wealth of characters there's a ton of mechanics that i really haven't even been able to dive into there's new gods right now that have been introduced hestia the god of flame and all that um daedalus is a character in there and like actually shows up rather than just being his hammer (sighs) I haven't even gotten to all the story beats that they've released for this first little public test, so I can't say everything Uh-oh. that's happening story-wise. I don't know. But if for anybody who is interested in learning more about this game or getting deeper into it, there is a YouTuber by the name of Halion, H-E-A-E-L-I-A-N. He is like the grandfather of Hades, in my opinion, and he uh-huh. is a... He is... A quirky little dude with <laughs> some serious skill. Um, I be- I don't think he's the one who holds the current uh, record for being able to complete the game at the highest heat. I'm not sure if that's still around. I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be impossible after at a certain point, but somebody eventually did it. I don't know if that was him. But if you're wanting to get into this game but you don't have time to play it or you want to go ahead and get a second opinion see see how it rolls out for somebody else definitely check his stuff out it's fantastic um i'm super stoked about this game title super giant has always been goaded in my book i they, they, yeah. they can do no wrong i can see no game that they've made that has not like given me some form of pause of like hey i should probably get that tattooed on me so Dude. They kill it every time. They knock it out of the park. Every single time. And then who 
doesn't just listen to Darren Core bangers, dude, on repeat all day. He's so good. Like, He's so good. So fucking amazing. And then I, I don't know who's doing their uh, voice lines across the entire like series as like the narrator or as main characters. I know, um, I know he's a person of color. I don't remember his name, but he is fantastic. He's he oh, plays yeah. he plays the uh, um, superconductor. No, no, no. What was the game that uh, it was based in? Like futurism, and it was like turn based. I forget. Um, well, not turn based, but like procedurally oh. based. Are you talking about Logan Cunningham? Yes, Logan okay. Cunningham. Yeah, 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 yeah. the guy who does the Bastion narration. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. I don't know if he's in Hades as well. I'm pretty sure he's the the narrator. I think he plays. Um... No, I'm not sure. I know he did a audio book that I absolutely loved, and I know he did Transistor as well. Yeah, he was the he was he was he was in Transistor. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just got to um, his IMDb page. He did Hades. Okay, what was he in Hades? He did Hades. Yeah. He did. Oh crap! They like they they, they cut it off up, and did of like a dot dot did. dot thing. Of course they did. It looks like he did at least. And it, it shows dot dot dot, so there are there are more. more one. Yeah, like, but he's at least on Hades, Poseidon, and Achilles. Yeah, he's goaded. He's fantastic. Um, oh, he did Ch- Karen, Asterius, and the storyteller. Yeah, of course he played this. So the so we also yeah. find out who the storyteller is. He is oh god, I forgot his name. Um, legendary story to, uh, legendary lore keeper of Greek mythology. I forget his name, but we find out in this game who the narrator is, and you know how they do those third person breaks sometimes. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's great. Uh, Homer, Homer. Oh, nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, Homer is supposed to be the narrator. Uh, but yeah, guys, I'm done gushing about the game. I'm so sorry oh. that you guys haven't gotten access yet. I'm yeah, sure once it, it's going to turn into early access pretty soon from what it, what it's looking at like. I um, hope so. One thing I want to say, you'll, the people who are on the freaking uh, discussion boards, y'all need to be grateful that we even get a super giant game because they could have just packed their shit up after Hades and just been done. Because they could have packed their shit up a long a time long ago. Time, they like, made after bank. Bastion, they could have been done. After Transist- yeah. uh, Transistor, they could have been done. Like. Yeah. So I'm stoked. Instead, they gave us Pyre. They gave us Pyre. They gave us Hades. Dude. Oh, my beloved. I think I... So yeah. I have 600 plus hours in that game just to give people, like, perspective yeah. of where I am with that game. But uh, some people are saying that the art artwork looks whack. Some people are saying that the art... The um, gods look less detailed. And... Dude. Y'all just... Just sh- they should also just be like consider that it's a small team, right? They only have twenty three employees. Yeah. See, Anthony, you're and giving them you're giving them leeway, saying that they're right. They're wrong. Well, <laughs> no, no, no. I'm saying that you. It is surprising that Supergiant Games hasn't done a completely different genre. Yeah. Because so often a small team of devs of game creators will be like this was great we did a good job i want a palate cleanser let's make something completely different a completely different genre they They haven't done that well i don't know it kind of depends on how you yeah they did it all the way up until hades i feel Uh, it's a little bit arguable just because transistor they all have a top-down view yeah but they are so unique mechanically Mm -hmm. that they feel very different but I do think that in the spirit of it, they the genre, like the interaction, is it's so, so similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will. So but. one thing I know that we're about to get Hades two, and it is it is terrible for me to be like, oh man, what what if they did this? But I'm going to say it because I'm a super giant fan. I'm probably gonna buy a shirt after this because honestly, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, this is the only game studio that puts out games that I consistently play every single time. So I might as well go ahead and give them something. Um, if they did a fighting game, I think I'd get oh. into it. Like if they I, give I me mean, a story based fighting game, and like de- you could dive into it. Like I don't know, man. 
I don't know. <laughs> Pretty much, I, I feel like anything they do is going to end up being just gold. Like I mean, they they could probably change the way that fighting games would work and make me feel like oh I have I have to know what everybody's story is through this entire thing. I don't know, man. So I'm done fanboying over Super Giant Games. Um, if you guys can get access to Hades 2, just go ahead and rec- request access. From what I heard, um, it's going to be just pretty much... Uh, they're going to choose people at random. I doubt I'm the, I am the uh, rarity of having 600 plus hours or anything like that. So, yeah, yeah just just throw it in there and see if you get it, get uh, get into the game. Play it as much as possible so that they can turn it into early access quicker for everybody else. And then by the time we get to early access, maybe they'll start revealing other tiers and kind of giving us more teasers. I know that I'm in it for the long haul. So I'll see you guys there. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Well, have you been playing anything else or has it been a lot of Hades too? No. (laughs) He's like, no. 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 I was playing Wild Frost. I played Wild Frost a lot. Oh, Wild Frost came to uh, mobile. Um and it ate did. up all my time before I got to my job and now I work like no. for real for real work so nice. you know I am currently just a Hades man other than uh, nice. practicing guitar in my free time. Very cool, Anthony. What have you What have you been playing this last week? Yo, I don't know where those sound effects were coming from, and I'm not sure if it was a new tab I opened, so I was a little distracted. Oh, no. Or did you just eat something, that He did. Were you opening a bag? That was what it was. It was oh, my did. God. Okay. Anyways, uh, quick question. Do y'all like it when I screen share what I'm talking about or no? Yeah. I mean, yeah, it helps for us. Even if, even, even if we don't use it, it, it helps. Yeah. Because it, okay. it, 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 like, allows me to have it. Well, this is what time I'm going to do this entire window to help me out here. Okay. Um, so yeah, baby! Start? There it is! There it is! Yeah, she there's blows. Hades too. Yeah, there I thought about is. pulling this up, but I, I didn't want to distract. Oh, so, yeah, there's is, Hades too. This game's going to nice. pop off, y'all. Yeah, it, it I have is, no idea. Oh, and, yeah, so Milanoi is the sister of Zagreus. First, uh, I think I already said it. Never mind. You're good. You're good. You did. You did. Yeah. So, let's see. What have I played? I played a like four different games in the past couple of weeks like i think i might have already talked about crypto the necrodancer you did uh which has been great i finally beat zone one so i'm on nice. zone two <laughs> nice dude it's, it's, a, hard game. Much it's a hard game feel the rhythm my brother feel the rhyme yeah but i i do love that game so i'll play it every now and then um I think I played a little bit of Bitcraft. Uh, that game is great for when you're working on things like uh, content creation. You're making a video, you're compiling it, and you're waiting for it. Not compiling it, God, my my uh, software development lingo is coming right out. Um, you're rendering the video, <laughs> and you can go and like oh, do some shame. fishing in Bitcraft. It's great. Oh man, I have also been playing a lot of Helldivers, of course. Uh, that game is just great uh but the newest game that i have played do i have it open here did i really close it man i'm lacking here anthony update your gosh dang browser bro what what do you mean oh there's an update button (laughs) anyways (laughs) i've been playing core keeper with my wife Uh, i played it a little solo and then she fell asleep game. watching me play yeah. it. Yeah. It's like Terraria and a whole bunch of other games like Factor- Factorio and um, I feel Star like Bound. even Stardew Valley. I, but I have been sleeping this. mechanics. I've been super yeah, excited to play mechanics. this one. Yeah, it's really cool. So it is in early <laughs> access. So they ideally will make improvements. The reason I bought it is because, as you can see, it's on sale, forty percent off. It's pretty great. It's been early access um, for a while, right? Yeah, it that's has been, been out since 2022. Downside. Yeah. Um, I mean, it makes sense for games to be out in early access for a long time if it's a small team. Yeah, there's an insane amount of stuff in this game. Like, I <laughs> cannot believe how many things already exist. Um, but it's really cute. It's really also at the same time tense and intense, uh, especially because, I mean, y'all remember Terraria and you have to like 
put down torches so that you can see where you're going and stuff like that, right? Well, uh, when you get to like the second zone, uh, you'll very quickly run into a monster that likes to eat torches and chase mm. you down. And so they will stop at every torch, which is a relief. But then the lights go out. Uh -huh. And then they keep coming after you, and it's, like, really intimidating. But it, it's a cool game. Um, oh, there goes the audio. And, I oh don't know, we've just been really enjoying it. It also has, like, it has that same effect. Oh, wow, that's a really big monster. It has the same effect on my wife and I as uh, Valheim, where this weekend we were playing, and we thought, like, maybe one hour passed by, but four hours passed by. Uh -huh. Time yep. eater. Was that? It's a time eater. Yeah. But it's just so great. I, it, I don't know how to explain it, but there's a lot of different zones. Some of them are happy. Some of them are intense. You can build your own homes, as you saw there in the video, potentially. And it's just... It's really cool. And it's up to, like, eight players. That's yeah, that's cute. pretty cool. I love that. Yeah. How big is it? It is really be? cool. Yeah, with it on sale, Dude, I might I might jump in. I... I zoomed out as far as I could with the map. It is huge. Like, are we talking <laughs> like, Terraria huge? Yes, at least Terraria huge. Wow. Like, it is really, really big. One of the cool things is um, we haven't gotten to it yet, but we've unlocked the ability to build mine carts and mine tracks, which oh, yeah. are so that you can quickly traverse from place to place. Oh, you can see here where you've got, like, uh, what is it? Factorio style um, Automation. belts. What do you call those belts that Conveyor deliver belts. materials? Conveyor belts, yes. So the right. other night, my wife was like, okay, I'm tired. It's time to go to bed. I'll leave the game open because it's her world until That's you get off. Bucks. I was like, thank you. Yeah. I'm buying it right now. And so I called her over. I was like, wait, I, you want to see one last thing? No. We finally unlocked like a drill and uh. I, I set up a drill and a power generator and it didn't make things happen as fast as we thought it was going to. And then we're like, oh, wait, this is what the conveyor belt's for. We're just going to have, like, a continuous supply of this material now. Nice. So let's, like, harness that. And it's a really cool game. Y'all should check it out. Um, I think, I don't know, some of it, uh, it's early access, so I don't want to judge it too hard. But the only thing that I would judge is, and it might be me, because I think if my wife was left to her own devices, things would have gone a lot slower. I went and unlocked so many things so fast like because i just kept going and going and going until my inventory was full mm, yeah. <laughs> and so i was able to like speed through like i was like wood armor i don't need that i already found all this special armor <laughs> like, yeah. i was like screw that like you're supposed to play it <laughs> maybe i don't know yeah, I was well, like, that I, way I'm about just, like Terraria too, where like well, the weird thing is like how do you how do you scale a game for people that are normal players and people that are us? Yeah, right. Yeah, it's That's difficult. Fair. So I was like, oh, I skipped by all this. Maybe it should be harder for me to get to this point. And then I was like, if I wasn't here by my wife's side, I think she might have gone slowly, you know, and mm -hmm. used all of these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's one of the things that um playtesting and early access gives a developer is that type of feedback that we don't get to see from our very narrow perspective. You know yeah, what I mean? That's fair. I think side quests are but yeah. super valuable. I think the idea of being able to complete the game fully is something to attain and very attractive. That being said, I'm here to maximize <laughs> my time. <laughs> and so I will be maximizing my time. But no, yeah. this game looks so, super uh, dope. Yeah, it does oh, there goes good. the audio again. Oh. Uh, okay. Oh. Okay. Do you all want to hear about what I'm looking forward to? What are you looking yeah, forward yeah, yeah. to? Yeah, go bud? for it. Yeah, what are you looking forward to? Okay, so there's Coral two games. Island. Yeah, he's looking forward to Coral Island. This I is don't a... even remember this too much, honestly. <laughs> Because this is something that I had set up for last week, but we had to skip a week. <laughs> but uh, if I remember right, Coral Island looks kind of like uh, a Stardew Valley, but you know the graphics, as you can see, are a bit more uh, low poly. detailed. Yeah, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. and it's just interesting. I'm curious about it. I think it's only single player though. 
Um, there's some very interesting romanticizing in this game that isn't one of the things that I actually care about in a video game, but I know some people do. Um, oh, there it is. Okay, so there's conveyor belts, Factorio stuff, underwater gameplay. That is why I wanted to bring it up okay. because I know our friend Eric loves underwater gameplay. And I was like, oh my God, okay. So I can't remember the details because it's been too long now, but there are... are enough interesting things about this game that I was like, I gotta bring this up. Okay. And, yeah, I don't know. Look, you're riding a freaking manta ray and you're... He was like, he was totally not with it. No? He was like... Well, it's, 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 it's just like... Okay, okay. The reason I made that face is just because I dream of a day where we get more underwater gameplay akin to something like Subnautica, mm -hmm. where it's very good, or something like Guild Wars 2, where it's very good. And unfortunately, that doesn't happen very often, and we don't get great underwater gameplay very often. But there's volleyball, Eric. Did there, you see that? There is volleyball. <laughs> I did see that. Wow, he's so this this almost looks like a a huge smorgasbord of something like a Stardew Valley mixed with The um, Sims? No, 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 no. What's the island game? Oh crap. I'm gonna get flamed so hard. Not a something oh man. Oh, I'm gonna get flamed. This is gonna be bad. Anthony, it's gonna be the, bad. I again? think I know what game you're talking about. Island too. animals, animal crossing, neighbors. Dude. Yes. Oh, you're not talking about Animal Crossing. Yeah. The Animal Crossing game. Yeah. Oh. Animal yeah. Crossing. It almost looks like an Animal Crossing slash, um, Stardew Valley mix type of deal. And I don't know. I think so someone brought this up on a stream, and I was like, "Oh, interesting." <laughs> and I honestly can't remember much more than Stardew Valley. Go. Is this Korean? Korean? Was this made by? Dude, I don't know. Korea? Okay. Let's see. Uh, if I escape, uh, Stairway games. games and Humble Games. games. Publisher developer. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. It's the laid-back farm sim game with a bunch of other crazy things going on. In yeah, it. there's a lot so, going on in it. To be fair. Honestly, I think the things that really that all I cared about was the um the farm sim stuff and i was like oh that's cool and underwater stuff i was like oh okay interesting and then the rest of it i'm actually personally just like eh i really don't care too much about the like like a lot of people really love this relationship simulator game stuff and i'm like yeah, yeah. you know they if really i'm playing a game and there's a npc in there that eventually over time slowly but surely i become like attached to just like reading a book cool but like when it's like in your face like oh i'm hitting on you i'm like i'm playing a video game i'm married i don't need that i have a life <laughs> leave me alone get, get off me <laughs> like i'm good but uh good more importantly <laughs> dudes jump ship jump ship jump ship jump ship has got my attention because it looks like basically probably like the best game loop from star citizen that doesn't exist in star citizen where you have a ship you have a squad you can be on planet you can be um what's the word going on someone else's ship you're managing trying to fix your ship trying to prevent uh, it from dying like yeah and so it's like squad gameplay if you i don't think it has to be squad you can probably be solo but you're trying to like obtain something you're flying around flying the ship there's fire that you have to you can board someone's ship like mm. it looks like a cool little you know um what is it what have we played recently it's that the dwarves that go mining very fast, for something that's boosting <laughs> oh god yeah i don't know <laughs> it, it like, it's not Complete, it's not even like early access is coming, but you can't get into it yet. Okay. Um, okay. I can't remember. I heard like a developer talking about it, and like there was a point in time where you're trying to go and get something, and then you tried, like, someone tried to hide from the pirates that were near them so that they couldn't get attacked. 
and it, it just seems really neat um so we'll see the biggest thing to me was like are there multiple ships because you only see like this one main ship right. in the videos here right. yeah it sounded like there are multiple ships and I'm like okay if there's multiple ships that's cool if there's not i'm gonna get bored really quickly mm -hmm. like but he said like choose your ship go out go on a mission go by yourself go with your friends go either apparently you can go from both like ship combat to first person on planet combat you see them flying around right there so i'm super curious i hope this ends up being a really cool game like we've had with helldivers and with uh deep rock galactic mm, like rock. yeah no? um i'm a, i'm really enjoying these games i feel like we actually talked about this a long time ago um like years ago where we were like why don't games just take the meat of like doing a dungeon you know the no. good part and just be that you know let us just hop in run the dungeon and cop out. out you know that's like darkest dungeon dude that's that's yeah. arpgs man yeah it's like diablo yeah. that's what diablo 4 is supposed to be but we all supposed to be level. supposed did y'all know that there's a cow level in diablo 4 yeah and yeah and, yeah. and no one has been able to get in yet i believe yeah. that you know what i also believe Nuts. That they're never going to make that game actually playable ever again. They have squandered that no. idea. I will never touch another Diablo game. It's, yeah, but the terrible CEO is gone now, so there might be yeah. a chance. I don't care. The ter terrible CEO is able to make other terrible uh, decisions that allow other terrible True. people to become part of the company. The True. Blizzard is I just, done. <laughs> I just think it's really funny that apparently a cow level was in development and it was so secret that developers at the company were like flaming about how it was atrocious that we weren't developing a cow level and turns out it was just top secret and it does exist it was like Bro. three or four developers that knew about it Bro. and the community still doesn't hasn't figured out how to get into it They've, they're like Bro. they're stuck no I, th yeah. I, I just think that's cool but um after all that have, did either of you watch uh the wired games direct I did not. By chance? I did not. So there's a bunch of games. These are all like indie games that are coming out that were in the Wired Games Direct. I'll only highlight a couple here. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, there's there's many. Um, so Hotel Architect. I'm just kidding. I don't care about Hotel <laughs> Architect. It's kind of, it's neat. It, if you like Theme Hospital and stuff like that, it's really yeah, cool. Um, but more importantly is gory, cuddly, carnage oh my dude God. God. you are a freaking like nonsense what is this it is insane you're a cat on a hoverboard and you have to save the world okay, okay. <laughs> it is a like we lost a hack Nat, and slash maybe. i think <laughs> we lost nat <laughs> dude like you just have to, okay here we go videos and screens where's the videos we need to see the let's see if this is the one it's just insane it's stupid i'm not gonna play this game but <laughs> it's just something this just that everyone looks needs like to a aware. sly cooper type of deal from like the early 2000s Damn. dude it's nuts like look these are unicorns that's a that's a scary looking unicorn and it's just all about oh gore my gosh this guy insane. just he just chopped him in half what is this game <laughs> Yes. Dude. dude it is absolutely nuts oh you're just oh my gosh you're cute so if this doesn't end up in the youtube video we just got to witness a cat take a hoverboard and shoot a rocket from his hoverboard at a There's unicorn so to blow it up everywhere yes this dude. is you can't crazy use any of these, yes i can't use any of this this is in, this is insane we can't use any of this <laughs> Oh my gosh! Let me make a dude, mark. So you this guys, is not so you a cuddly know, kitty game. Use this. <laughs> it's it's freaking nuts. But what what's really going to be up? At, I think maybe Eric's alley is fractured minds. Fractured minds. So let me fast forward a little bit here. This game, if I if this is the right one, hmm. oh, did I pick the wrong game? I picked the wrong game. Oh no! I think I picked fractured the wrong game. Means. I picked the wrong game. Good. I'm sorry, guys. I can't even remember. I well, the I thought it was fractured. Huh. Yeah, man. Oh, you do y'all know? Deliver to us to the moon? No, no. 
I don't. I, don't, I mean, that could. That's not it. That's not it. That's not it. That's not. Wasn't there another Man. like, studi- uh, like uh, mini E3 for like indie companies that came out like a while back and they announced uh, like a bunch of cool, interesting stuff? I forget what it was called. I should probably know that yeah, because you know sure. we actually report about about that at the end of our podcast. Yeah, we're we're gonna have to do a lot more research on the smaller yeah. release yeah. things. At some point, we'll have to do a, a like live coverage or something on e3 or some nonsense like live react I don't or know something if they have that'd be e3 fun anymore eric yeah they do they have e3 right okay you go ahead and look that up and you clarify that because is like, that the one that uh, that they don't have the, at the very the, least we'll have game I awards e3 is canceled and that's why they had like that's why the indie one was like such a big deal because it was like he, mm. big yeah that might be the case maybe Ooh, this one's on ps5 so this is no. the Dark World Karma. Yeah, like I can't remember if this is the one, but there's one of the one. Oh, this is it. <laughs> you see the the TV heads here. I do. Okay, so I'm gonna rewind to the beginning of it's this uh, trailer. So this. this is the one that I was like, <laughs> this might be up Eric's alley. Um, it is a psychological. I don't know if it's horror. It, it probably said on the other screen, but. You're going back and forth between like dreamlike horror worlds and reality, and and you're trying to manage those two things, and it gets really insane. And this looks like kind of a slow trailer, so we're gonna fast forward a little bit. But like, hmm. just that scene right there is probably yeah. enough for some. It people gives like it me gives observer like, vibes. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of nuts. Like, it gets weird. Yeah, it looks let's weird. Just, let's it, just it, jump around. It here. does look Maybe a lot like a, an observer. Oh. Whoa, did you see that? Yeah. Fancy. Almost like that was kind of nuts. And so you're walking down and then all of a sudden like your reality completely shifts. There's people fucking floating around there. Yeah. Like it's uh, that's that's no. I I will not play this, but Eric yeah. might. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, this Help. definitely looks semi up my alley. <laughs> it's nuts Absolutely dude there's not. it was interesting to listen to the developers in the wired direct like uh stream talk about this because they were explaining everything about the understanding of it okay so he just took like a Hell vr hat that. off or something crazy yeah, and it looks very kojima-esque mm-hmm. i'm in for that mm-hmm. yeah and so, and the the developers, I was surprised. Are uh, I was only surprised because you see like all this English, and 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 I think I was watching the trailer in English, and then they were uh, straight up Chinese developers, and I was oh, like, oh, nice. You know, it's just like I was like, I expected it to be English developers because this is like English game, oh, yeah, yeah, very well made, and I was like, okay, okay, English is not their main language, uh, but the game that I care about is Arcade Paradise. Oh my god. What is, what is because that? uh honestly all i don't all i remember is there's arcades in like vr or something like that that's all i care about you like it's a vr game you i don't know if it's vr there i might be confusing it with another game but there's arcade machines i really love arcade machines i think they're the coolest are pretty cool when they're like custom looking yeah, yeah like we used to go to dragon con just for the arcade machine okay i used to go to dragon con just for the arcade machines until that stopped being a thing because of covid like yeah it's really cool and so i think this game you end up like collecting arcade machines in your own like uh arcade or something like that i can't really remember so i'm curious about it we'll see see how it goes yeah it could be interesting yeah but yeah that's been about it i think um this uh, trailer did not really tell us anything except for the fact that there's arcade machines. It did not. This no, was it, it was a very uh, big trailer, for sure. Thick yeah, trailer. it was really weird because like in the trailer, you see this laundromat. The guy like goes to do his chores in the laundromat, and then it becomes an arcade. I, I guess you turn the laundromat into an arcade or something. By playing the games in the laundromat. Yeah, I, I probably should have played the launch trailer here. Like. Yeah, th- those are real people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> those are real people uh-huh. in the trailer. And he's removing gum from a trash. Gum. And then he's. This almost looks like might a, be in uh, VR. I think it is. 
It's weird. Is this the same game? <laughs> yeah, I know, this right? Is this is literally the like... launch trail. I don't know, man. <laughs> it's weird very stuff. Very odd. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Okay. okay, this trailer should not be what they chose. I'm just going to put it out there. Okay. We should have done something else besides this trailer. Okay. This trailer looks like the magic school bus on uh -huh. drugs. <laughs> yeah. And then what I, happened? I, I, yeah. I, I will be real with you guys. I was definitely like working while the wire direct was going on, and I looked up and I saw arcade games. Oh, and I was like, "Oh, cool, God. arcade games!" Write dude, this down. You have to vet before you <laughs> present, dude. You have to. You vet. have to vet. I like arcade oh, games, man. That's, that's fair. Right? That's fair. We're taking uh, away your privileges. arcade games We're next to the laundry to machine. Place. Like, <laughs> what's better? <laughs> it's out now. I, oh so, God, I'm so mad at you, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> So as a as a oh my God. as a segue segue, I what? of course we had to mix miss last week, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, I I officially turned thirty two, <gasps> so there were just a bunch of birthday things that were going on last last week. I don't like when you do that. Like do what? When you make me realize how old I am, and I didn't know that. <laughs> Shut up, both of you My birthday's like two Shut weeks up. before Eric's, Shut and I'm like, <laughs> dude, what? I forget how old I am, but then Eric goes and he's like, man, I was talking to your sister the other day and she made me feel so old. And I'm like, what happened? And he tells me, and I'm like, well, now I feel old. I don't want to hear these stories anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, but because of that, I actually got to play three games, three games. Uh, these past two weeks That's that were, were were kind of interesting. So. I'll I'll start with the least interesting of the few, mm -hmm. and that is I played a game called Magicraft. Now this is an early access title, uh, done by what looks to be one, maybe two developers max, and the, it's done by a Chinese developer, I think. Now. This looked really interesting because it has a Noita type of feel to it. And for anybody who doesn't know, Noita is probably my second favorite game of all time. I really enjoy it. I love the aspect of building out insane s spells. And then you combine that with an almost Binding of Isaac type of feeling to it. And you have Magicraft. So... You can have up to X number of wands, and then you build out spells, kind of like you're coding what they do. They can do tracking, electric damage, and then just picture you're playing Binding of Isaac at the same time. So far, it's relatively fun. I think it starts a little bit slow, um, but I want to spend some more time with it. I don't have too much time in it yet. I've only done the first two areas, so I haven't been able to do any super crazy combos yet. Um, but it's relatively fun, and I'll probably play it so, again here and there. I have an important question here. So I just rewound the like trailer here because I can't tell if on this map here, are you able to jump to the other side yes. of the map like some yes. of those old yes. games? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. I love that they... Obviously, like in this next map, you have you're stuck. Like there's yeah. walls, but it's really neat to have a combination of different map styles, like those old arcade games where you can pop and yeah. teleport to the other side, like Pac-Man or whatever. And I will say that is where this game shines. Where this game does not shine is in its writing. Yeah, <laughs> it is the weirdest art style. Mm -hmm. for its characters and the story is trite as all get out and it is uh, it's one of those things where the developer had an interesting cool idea that he essentially took from noita and put it into a binding of isaac world and in that regard those two aspects of it are really really fun and cool but Everything else about it is meh, meh, and so I'm probably gonna try it out here and there again. But I, it's one of those things where if you like this game, 
or this idea and you haven't played Noita, <laughs> Noita is just infinitely better. If you've played Noita as much as I have and you want something similar, this can like scratch that itch a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. I started laughing because I clicked on uh, Wave Games, the developer, and I'm not sure what's going on up here. Oh, he's done like uh, very weird. What are they called when they use real footage and they're like story based oh, games? I don't remember, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, he's done those types of games. Oof. I forget what they're called. Oh, yeah, yeah, so I, I scrolled down further and we see, I guess, the three new releases. Wait a second. Wait a second. There's more. There's 21 games? No, just 11, just 11. it looks like. There's DLC and demo. Yeah. Okay, let's ignore this. There are three games. We have Magic Craft, but then I was reading Soul Academy, which yeah. is a academy simulator with automatic MOBA battling, you and, and you manage... manage shabby. You will manage Soul Shabby Academy. Soul Academy. Recruiting and training That's students. funny. Okay. It's, I was just like, what? Okay. <laughs> and then the first game that they released was a rhythm game. Um. So yeah, very interesting different styles we got here going on very, yeah. three very different games to be I, honest i honestly think this is like a one developer thing and yes. this is he's kind of just creating whatever he wants right yeah and in that regard there's him, some cool like, stuff here yeah they, uh, like i should note there is some fun to be had in magic craft I think it has that spellbinding aspect that is really cool. And it feels like playing Anoita uh, Binding of Isaac Hybrid. And if you like those two games, worth trying out. It's kind of fun. Hmm. Now, after oh, that, crap. of course, we had the release of Inkbound. And we've talked about Inkbound on the show before. Now, Inkbound is kind of... It, it, it's I a roguelike game and you go through and it plays like a turn-based Hades essentially mm -hmm. is probably the way to put it um so far it's pretty fun there's a lot of strategic choices I think the only unfortunate thing about it is that it seems kind of simplistic so far, I'm pretty early in the game. I only have about eight hours into it so far. But it's pretty fun. You get a little bit of tactics, a little bit of deck building almost, where you're trying to build out your skills and choose different items. And you go through a run and you're trying to beat a boss. It's a roguelike. Yeah. And it's relatively enjoyable. I think the coolest aspect of it is that you can play co-op and the co-op just turns into insanity, right? Mm -hmm. You get to just do some crazy combos between the different classes that exist. Interesting. But I would say that so far, I would love to see something like this that was a had a little bit more depth than this one has. It does feel a little bit simple for me. Um, Almost every run that I went through, I was able to beat the run first try. It's it, it seems like there's not a lot of complexity, but there's also some concepts in it that don't make a lot of sense to me from a game design perspective. And so the builds feel kind of solved to me. So one of the main mechanics is that you have a pretty small area. You go through, you activate this fight, and you're stuck in this circular arena. You go through turn-based gameplay. You move, enemies move. You move, enemies move. So the enemies have infinite movement. Which means that on their next turn, they are going to set themselves up how their AI wants them to be set up. Healing in this game is sparse. Which means that throughout your run, you're going to take unavoidable damage at some point. And at that point, you're not going to get that health back very easily without giving a lot of things up. So, 
if you choose a build that is all about mitigating damage, it's almost impossible to lose because you just design combos around mitigating damage. If you don't design combos around mitigating damage, it's a war of attrition and you usually lose out. Mm. Now, I am sure that people have gotten good enough at the tactics of this game that they can play the race game and essentially say, oh, I'm going to race in damage to kill these guys before I take damage and maneuver myself. But, you know, it's interesting. The story and the world are kind of cool. You're essentially an inkblot for building out the story and everything's about stories in general. So you're going through different books and going on an adventure through a different storyline. And that all feels really deep and cool. And there's different characters. The voice acting is amazing. There's a lot of high quality stuff here. Overall, like a seven out of 10 experience, really, really fun. And I think it'd be really fun with friends to go through and just have a light tactics night where you don't have to sit there and plan your turns over and over with people just to survive. You can kind of just have fun with it and still get a little bit of tactics gameplay. Unlike something like Baldur's Gate 3, where you really might have to plan things out if you're you playing on the hardest difficulty. Yeah. Yeah. This one, you can kind of turn your brain off just a little bit, but get the same tactics feeling from the gameplay. Um, How'd you find out about this game? So the 1.0 release was actually a week ago, but I actually played Monster Train, their first game. And so I've gotten a lot of their news from, um, from Steam and stuff like that. And so they got really popular because of Monster Train. I will say, I think Monster Train is a better game than Inkbound, but I like deck building roguelikes a little bit better. So essentially you go through, you're building a deck similar to something like, um, what's that What's that game where uh, that Slay just Spire. released its two point? Yes, it's like a Slay the Spire, except your cards correlate with monsters that you can summon and things like that. And you're looking at a vertical train. Hell train. And yeah, so you're playing train. cards into different sections, and then they attack the section across from them. Uh, mm -hmm. Monster Train is a lot of fun. If you haven't played it, it is well worth playing. And Inkbound's a lot of fun. Hmm. The developer's doing you some know, really cool stuff. So. Okay. So that actually kind of supports a theory I was developing while you're talking about Inkbound, which is that. Um, you're such Eric is such an experienced gamer that it is hard for a game to be engaging if it doesn't have enough basically like diversity, right? Yeah. And Noita with its yeah, like it infinite of level of different things is insane amount of diversity. Card mm -hmm. games in general provide a lot of different diversity because you can just oh. create so many different decks, right? But then Inkbound is a roguelike and, you know, there's some roguelikes that are so intricate, so deep that there is a lot of diversity and awesomeness. But it's not a game that lends itself, like it's not a genre that lends itself well to having much stuff going on. Yeah. And so you're probably playing Inkbound and being like, you know, I've kind of been here. I've done that. Like, whatever. That's that. fair. Yeah. yeah. Like, like I think that's entirely fair. It, I, I think there is some merit to saying that while Inkbound may not be my perfect game, like there is nothing inherently bad about it. It's it was a fun experience for me, and I could easily see myself playing, you know, twenty to thirty hours and getting a lot of enjoyment out of it. Um, I enjoyed my first eight hours very thoroughly. And I want to go back and play some more of it and see where it goes. Now, there's levels. So you level up and unlock harder runs and stuff like that, too. So there there could be more complexity there. This is definitely a first look from me still. And the reason it's a first look is because one of the most interesting gaming experiences and what I hope will become 
the, in my opinion, Diablo killer was just released. I'm sorry, is Diablo even alive? Diablo yeah, that's va dead fair. Dead, fair, fair. That's valid. But that genre's killer. The next king. So, the developers of Ori and the Blind Force. Oh, this looks so good. I know exactly. Just what you're released about. a new action RPG called. One second, because I'm forgetting what that's called. Uh, no Rest for the Wicked. It's so, it looks so, so good. It Nat, I may or may not have played the shit out of this the past week. I have like 20 hours into it. Um, it's already out? It is. It's in early access. You've been playing Hades too. I've been playing Hades too. I've been playing No Rest for the no Wicked. No Rest for the Wicked. Dude, I so, love Team uh, what is I am, Moon. Or something like that? Moon Studio? Uh, Team Moon. Team Moon. Yeah, yeah. Now, I'm going to go ahead and preface this a little bit. This game is going to be divisive to some degree. And the reason I say that is because it feels more like you're playing an Elden Ring or a Dark Souls game, but it's a Diablo style game. Dude, I'm here for that. So the uh, combat- I'm so, I'm so sorry, if you missed it, uh, Steam just told me I was not allowed to look at No Rest for the Wicked because I said I was born in 1911 by Bloody. the accident. <laughs> I think they're like saying no one's alive <laughs> from 1911. Oh, jeez. <laughs> they're like, no. no you're dead. <laughs> so, <laughs> I try go again. back to your grave. You're dead. <laughs> oh, my well, yeah, God. Yeah, I, as, as far as I can tell, and I don't think this game is going to release this year, it's in early access. This game may very well go into my top 15 list if not higher depending on where they go i'm installing it right now it is <laughs> such a joy so i love dark souls games and i think there's something to be said about playing a dark souls game in a third person view but there is something so charming about having an arpg similar to diablo where you can go on runs get better loot, play with friends, because this whole game is being designed to play with friends in the same way a Diablo does. But the combat is slow, weighty, intentful. The art design is wonderful. Man, this game looks gorgeous. And the voice acting is phenomenal. That's the design right. of the world is off the charts. It gives me an almost Path of Exile feel. And the boss fights are so much fun. I kid you not, this this might end up being my my game of the year. If they release uh, the year that they release the 1.0 of this, it will probably end up being my game of the year. Now, to preface this that. This is probably the most expensive early access game I've ever seen. Yep. Yeah. Because I'm. I don't. I don't care. It's or it's it's Moon Studio. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. And and here's the thing. So I will say, I'll go ahead and preface this. A lot of people probably got some initial hate from this game because of how it released initially. And I'll go ahead and preface. There are definitely problems, but all of the problems are can be written off by things that are easily fixable or fixable well before a 1.0 release. For example, when they initially released a few, uh, on April 18th, they had a different durability system in place. People hated that durability system so much that it was mostly negative on the first day. Mm. They fixed it before the first day was over. And now it's, po and now it's mostly positive. And now it's mostly positive. There are stutters, I think, due to FPS and graphics, and they're working on making the graphics better, and they're working on more graphics options. My computer's For me, I, can already tell. I turned all of my settings down, and the stutters disappeared. When it's playing smoothly, this game is a joy. And it is early access. 
Agreed. And agreed. A toaster. So I mean, for everybody hey, listening, I, I it is entirely I fair. But I do that. say that for people like me, and I'm more critical of early access games. I don't know who, uh, like, what state this was in because I didn't play it until after the first patch was released on the first day. Like, I literally didn't even see that it had released until after that first patch came out. So I did not get to experience it as it was initially. But nothing about this game would, so far, would make me not rate this like a 9 out of 10 game already in early access form as it exists right now. How story? The story so far is so cool. Okay. I love the world that they've built up. I love this design that they're setting up and they have these characters that have a lot of weight to them and I'm excited to see where they go. Mm. And it has that verticality design similar to like a Dark Souls where you're unlocking ladders and you're finding shortcuts that knowledge allows you to get from area to area more quickly or by unlocking different shortcuts. Mm. And one of the coolest things, every weapon I've used so far and every different ability that I've used plays so differently that constantly as you're getting upgrades, I could see how your build kind of changes and how your entire way of playing the game changes, mm. which is really, really nice. It shows for a lot of replayability, not to mention they're going to have an in-game like Diablo and things like that. And they already have an in-game with an endless dungeon, I think, although I haven't gotten there yet, but I've heard people talking about it. They're going to have more of those and more in-game dungeons with different bosses and things like that so that this could really be the next big ARPG if they keep it up at this rate. There's space for it. Diablo uh, created there, space but wasn't able to fill it. I think and not only fast. that, no other no other ARPG has weighty combat like this. Weighty, no. I mean, you have... Yeah. Um, Path of Exile, Path of Exile but... but it's not, we don't know it's not weighty. Going, it, you know. it feels like a, a, a slot machine that yeah. once you get... The 777 by getting the right pieces of gear you just roll through everything yeah in this game man those bosses they'll pick you up and throw you against a wall and then laugh as you get the you died screen man like <laughs> shit's real i so one of the cool experiences there there's these things in the game and i won't explain i'll explain them kind of vaguely just so it doesn't ruin the surprise but there are places in the game and you look at it and you're like, oh my gosh, I have to go there. And so me being the wary adventure was like, Shh, well, I'm going to go there. And I walk in and I'm like, this is so great. And then a guy comes out of the ground, grabs my legs, throws me into a rock and kills me yeah. instantly. Yeah. Um, Checks out. And then I understood why I wanted to go there so badly. Because the game said, come here if you dare. You're so freaking corny, dude. You're so freaking <laughs> corny. Oh, my gosh. Ugh. But, um, but yeah, I have enjoyed this experience thoroughly. This will probably end up being... If the story and everything is as great as it is now and they just make it better, I don't see how this couldn't get into my top five, top ten games of all time, for sure. Sick. Like, it has the quality, art style, and feels of something like Ori in the Blind Forest with the gameplay of Dark Souls and the replayability of something like um, Diablo. Oh, but it's completely single player. For now. now. So if you go to their early access and actually expand it, I think, or you yeah, go... Yeah, I saw something that said multiplayer. Yeah, so their update first update, update they're working one. on. It. Yeah, so their next update. And here's the thing. I have already run into puzzles and things in the game that are designed for multiplayer. Like, I can tell that they're designed for multiplayer. 
And so I, you can tell as you go through the game that their intent is multiplayer. They want this to be something that you can play co-op with friends in a Diablo style of way. So that is their first update. Freaking sick, dude. Yeah. I love it. That's cool. Man. Three games, man. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it was it was cool. It was cool. They were all really fun too. Like none of none of these games are bad games. I, I recommend trying out all of them. You know, but obviously no rest for the wicked is is the clear winner for me this week. I heavily recommend that game for anybody who likes ARPGs, Dark Souls, or just beautiful games in general. So. Anthony, are you trying so to I share got two something quick... outside of your time? Bro, was this, it's Bro. called organic conversation. Okay. Hmm. I thought organic... you were going to say it's called organic chemistry. Organic chemistry. I was. I mean, I was going to ask. I just accidentally already pulled it up, so I kind of couldn't undo that. Oh, yeah, this is the one you were talking about previously, PAX Day, right? I've never talked about this. I just found about out about this, like, yesterday. Well, I... Did you... I think you told me about that. Oh, no. You know what? I was watching an Asmongold video. Asmongold has talked about this game frequently. So what I wanted to bring up was that I love that there's a bunch of games coming out that are like social sandbox MMOs, and one of them is bound to be good. Hopefully. Yeah. Right. That's all I hope for, too, is if one of them is good, we're solid. Right, right. And so here's another one. PAX Day. It's got it's in alpha, so it's extremely, extremely alpha. Right it's now, really like, alpha. Uh, but the reason <laughs> the fun part about it, I mean, there's some of these general mechanics where it's like, you know, you can lay claim to an area and it's your space and do X, Y, and Z. But I think the funniest thing is that one of the skills, because their skills are like runescape skills, where it takes you a long time to develop these skills a lot of investment so much investment that you need to work with other people because you're going to be a master of one and if you try to do everything you can ideally if the game's good but it's going to take you forever one of the skills is charcuterie oh my gosh <laughs> there's a skill Anthony. for being a charcuterie person <laughs> and i think that's hilarious okay. now i but better is the brewer now yeah. winemaker and brewer now, I will say one cool thing, if, if you're interested, if you look at this game and you're interested, um, Asmongold actually has a whole group on his Discord, I think, that plays this game specifically. They've created like a castle and an area and all these kinds of things, and they play it quite frequently. He has a, I, I think something like three or four hours worth of videos on this game specifically. So if you do like it, he has a uh, some pretty cool videos on it. Yeah. Right. So might be neat. We'll see. Uh, and then the last little bonus thing is Rumble Club, which is probably going to be the hottest thing since like Among Us and um, Fall Guys. what is that other like Fall Guys? Fall Guys. Yeah. yeah. And the coolest thing that the that I've seen for this game that the developers have done is that um, as a streaming community you can have your viewers join the queue to join the next game. And then you click a button, remove everybody that's a queue person. So like the three of us could be playing and we're like the actual people that are in every single game. And then we can fill the other like 17 slots with our community by just the click of a button and they get to play with us and there's a bunch there's like king of the hill there's deathmatch there's team games there's a game where you have to eat the most cupcakes out of everyone and if you kill somebody they drop other cupcakes and so it's a cute little game that's on like every platform that's probably going to be all over the place for the next couple of weeks is my mm. guess because well, that doesn't it just me. like it popped like up uh, war and they might be streaming all over the place i don't know if actual individual players will be playing it a lot yeah we'll yeah, see i mean a lot of people played fall guys and it's got that like fall guys vibe but more of a you know combative game like um just combat games in general but what's the most uh, popular one i think the the most popular one right is now the the free one stumble guys oh i don't know about stumble guys Stumble Guys is it's a free Fall Guys clone essentially. 
but mm. because it's free and on mobile it shot up so now it's it's more popular it makes hands over feet money but it's also been a sponsor for mr beast before yeah and so yeah, they I had got really i had really mixed feelings when i saw that because i was like this is literally fall guys yeah but like like a hundred percent copy paste 100%. Fall guys. like no oh well i but, guess maybe there's some sliding mechanics and stuff like yeah that. i mean there are, there are obviously some differences but like uh, the yeah. idea is so much so fall guys that it's kind of stick. it's rough to say yeah but, but the, the, the the biggest thing I like about this game that I think more games ought to implement over time is just, oh, your multiplayer game? Okay, streaming is a thing. Let streamers have a queue so their viewers can get in line to play with them. That is you know, cool. That, that you part kick out the really people cool. that you just played a game with in Helldivers. So three guys out, three new people in. You know, and just rotate through them in line. And, like, that's just... That's really cool. It's a very creative way to develop a game and include a bunch of people in it. Yeah. So I agree. That that is a cool aspect of it. Like having streamer based functionality is something that more games should start looking and into if they can. Eric, you have to appreciate the fact that whoever made this game obviously went through that blender tutorial, if you noticed. Yeah, because of the donut. donut. <laughs> yeah that's well, like everybody does everybody does that that blender tutorial is the most done tutorial on the planet yeah it's crazy yeah i was watching some streams today and that uh that donut is not to be uh messed with mm. it, it will kill you quickly yes. but yeah oh. it's a neat little game it seems a little bit more um up our alley than i would say like Fall Guys was because Fall Guys was fun, but there's so much randomness and annoyance in that randomness that you're just like, I might be the best person here, but I can't win. Yeah. But in Rumble Club, there's right. much more like, I'm the best. I might win because I'm the best. Yeah. Like, the only like, the, the the best thing to come out of Fall Guys, the music fucking slaps. Oh God. That is the very true. Killed it. Yeah. Yeah. The composer killed it. That, that music slaps, and you hear it everywhere yeah, now. Everywhere. It slaps. I wonder right. if StumbleGuts has the same music. <laughs> the yeah, I'm not the sure. Hellest copyright copyright stricken. I'm so surprised that I mean maybe there was like a lawsuit, but like if any game should be able to sue another game, it's like okay, Stumble Guys, yeah. you literally copy pasted our game. Nothing. What? What is? What is different here? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how. It feels so slimy that I'm like, no. Like I, I very much agree that every new game is building upon like other games and other mechanics that they've been inspired by, and that's okay. But when you see a game and it's like, wait, that's a hundred percent the same game. <laughs> yeah. What yeah, that's do? that's hard. I don't know. There's a difference between what, what, borrowing from the greats and copying the entire formula and saying it's different. Yeah. Where, where's the innovation here? Yeah. There's a car. Okay, there it is. There's cars. Oh, okay. There's racing. Okay. Yeah. Right? That, they that's, they definitely know. did some minimum amount of work to be able to legally say they're different, you know? Yeah, probably. But, but it's one of those things where it's like, meh. Meh. Sketchy. Yeah. Okay. But I guess with that, we'll... uh. We'll call it a show, guys. And this will this will be the last week. So, funnily enough, everybody will understand the time uh, difference now. The last Discord episode has officially <laughs> aired on YouTube. So, at this point in time, starting tonight and tomorrow, I will be editing my first Riverside video. Oh. Jazz hands. Our, our text chat will be either rife with celebration or absolute dejected terror. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was about to say, uh, if it sucks, um, we'll have to do it all it'll be again. rough. <laughs> and I'll cut out all the things. But if it's great, then you will hear this next portion. We have a little link in the doobly-doo and it will link. And if you like how these look, 
uh riverside does have a little kickback link that they they give to all their people feel free to sign up and try it out if you're doing your own podcast about random uh hooliganness like we do and well uh, let us know if if the quality and everything looks better fingers crossed Um, hopefully it is yeah we have officially passed uh, our 50 subscriber mark. We're at 62, I believe, Ooh. today. Oh, wow. Shorts and everything popping off. We, you know, thank you That's for great. watching. If you haven't, we should definitely do this at the beginning of the podcast and not the end that nobody's going to watch. Like and subscribe below. I'm going to cut this into the beginning of the podcast because fuck it. Um, but with that said. We'll see you in the next one. And now one. he has to believe himself out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I do not have to do extra editing because of it. <laughs> yeah, I'll put a marker there for you. There you go, buddy. Uh, Take there two. Go. Let's go. Take two. Welcome to the... No. No. Please, God. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take much oh, of yeah. <laughs> Yes. Well, we'll see you in the next one. Y'all have a good week. Love y'all. Bye. Peace. See you.